Welcome back everybody. Today, we're starting the vlog back up. And what I mean by that is that I'm just gonna take you guys along with me all week, kinda on the off season of a row cropper so you guys can kinda see what I do during the off season. And since it's been a week since I've posted, you maybe wonder where I've been. And last week I just did a lot of little small jobs and I didn't really film any of it. But there's still a hole in my garage door. So what my plan is, is just take you guys along with me all week and kind of show you the things that I do. And this goal right here is the first thing on my to-do list today. Kind of I got two things this morning and they're both in Seymour. I'm gonna take this thing to a mechanic. It's got an oil leak that's happening underneath of it. And I called to see if it's maybe something that I wanted to tackle. And after talking to a few mechanics, they said the word tight and squeeze. And for a six foot two, nearly 300 pound man, tight and squeeze are not two words that you like to hear when you gotta work on something. So we're gonna go try out another mechanic shop, see if they can track down the oil leak, fix it and see what they charge us. But essentially we've heard okay things about them so we figured we'll give them a try and uh, maybe put them in the Rolodex of mechanics that we can work with. So what we've got to do, load this thing up, strap it down, head to Seymour, drop it off and then we're actually going to go to the welding shop and pick up that tool skit for this dually. See, there's our oil leak. Holy smokes! I about bit it right there. Anyways, I got the skid steer there offloaded at the shop. Um, these are actually the places I was just both at were Amish uh, run places, so I wasn't filming there. Uh, I did get some pictures though when I was actually at the machine shop where I was getting the tool skid welded up, which is now done and on the truck. Uh, everything in there is run by air, it's super cool. Uh, and I got some pictures as we were building this tool skid and got it put together. But right now I'm actually headed down this muddy gravel road to the tire shop to get a bolt pulled out of one of the duels on this truck. And then after we get that done, we'll give you guys a little up close tour of this tool skid. Mudding. So what we're going to do is actually put my tool skid takeoff theory to the test. So to do that, I'll need the impact gun and a 15 16th. That should be all we need to zip this thing off real quick. But this is it here in all of its glory. They actually had the fuel tank done before I got there. They actually did that last week. And we were just planning on me bringing the truck in. That way we could build the rest of the skid on the truck and make sure the dimensions are correct. And when we were doing that, I actually took some pictures. So I'll filter them in as I talk about how this thing was put together. So the main base of this tool skid is, is these three by six inch tubes. Uh, they are big enough that I can put my pallet skids in here, pallet forks, and be able to remove this skid off of here. How this thing is secured to the bed is, is that there's one dog that goes down into these holes right here. So that will keep it from sliding forward or back. Uh, we'll actually more help it from sliding back. It won't slide forward because of the headache rack here. On this side, we put, put a bolt through another dog and put it on there. And now this is bolted down to the frame. I mean, this thing is on there. All in all, this fuel tank here is 30 inches wide, 24 inches tall, and 36 inches across. 
And then kind of an added deal that we did to it is, is that I put this place to hang chains and binders in there. Uh, it's got a bent piece of metal down on the back side, so it'll keep all the chains nice and tight up against it. It'll get painted up, and I think it'd look pretty slick if I put my logo there on the back side of this deck plate. And then on this side will obviously be where the Montezuma toolbox goes. I'll just get it nice and bolted down to this plate right here, and we should be in good shape. So there you go, you can kind of see how we welded that up. It's just to pull it up, give it good pressure, and uh, keep it together. I need this gal. Boom, just like that, one tool skid off of the off the truck and ready for action. So I gotta find my dog and then we're gonna go do the next project real quick. And that next project is, is I need to tidy up the hay shed a little bit. Because on Sunday, I actually moved some hay. I delivered it to Molly's aunt. And then first bale I picked up, boom, Ben's in the walker. He's got his back's hurting. It's like it made a pretty good long day yesterday with my tweaked back. Uh, moving about 80 square bales, which isn't a tremendous amount of bales that I moved that day, but it was with the tweaked back. So as long as I keep moving, my back dough won't stiffen up and uh, hurt too bad. So we're gonna go move uh, these pallets out of the way, and then we'll kind of go over what my plan is for the rest of the week. As you can tell the hay shed is dwindling in what we have in inventory and we actually made it to what i actually thought was some of the nicest hay that i put up all of last year it is about this five ish percent to brome grass alfalfa bales i got about 150 of those those haven't sold if you guys are in iowa and ground me somewhere and you want some really good quality small square bales find my email in the email section below but what I'm going to be doing here today is, as you can tell, there are a bunch of pallets around because we set everything on pallets to keep the bottom bales good. Uh, I got to get them pulled out of here, keep this hay shed clean. And then I'll probably stack uh, what I'll call my quality control bales, probably over here with these other guys. Let's get to cleaning. Maybe I'll do a time lapse. How's the time lapse sound? Let's do that. There we go, that's that. Um, I scraped that hay up. I don't do it every single time. I probably maybe do it twice a year. Keeps the barn looking cleaner and deters uh, rodents from running around in that. So I'll get a bucket and I think, I don't have a bucket over here. I think it's only over this shop. And then I'll put it in the compost pile. So the next thing I actually need to do is right around here. And like I've talked about earlier, we've got terrace and tile projects uh, planned here for early this spring which we'll be taking you guys along with us for. We're trying to come up with our order here and I don't need that much five inch for our projects that we've got going on. So trying to figure out if I need to order another roll 
or if this plus maybe like a 100 foot roll might do enough for the five inch that we've got. So we're looking at five inch, one roll or one wrap around the core is 100 foot and then two rolls is 250 feet of total pipe. Okay, we've obviously got one full wrap and then maybe a half. So my guess is that we've got somewhere around 150 feet of five inch pipe. That was simple enough. So here's what we've got to do to kind of wrap up the rest of the day and kind of give you guys a sneak peek and what's coming for the rest of the week. I've got to get that three point right there onto the back of the Kubota so I can hook it up to that trailer right there. I need to get the hoses off of the snow blade and put onto the grapple bucket because one of the things that we've got to do here sometime this week and possibly even tomorrow is my dad wants to go cut some hedge posts because we have a fence that we have to put in um, sometime this spring and we've got to cut our own hedge post so we're going to since it's sloppy out use the tractor a grapple pallet forks to work with the hedge post trees and get that cleaned up you guys will see that as we go lovely thing to be carrying with a tweak pack. This is light, this is light, this is light, this is light. Well, there we go. All in all, not really a bad day. Got the Bobcat delivered to a mechanic to get a leak worked on. We got the tool skids welded up the rest of the way and got it home and then got it off of the Dodge here. We've then also then hooked up to the Kubota, to the trailer. Got the pallet forks on and the grapple bucket so we can cut hedge posts tomorrow. Got the tile looked at, figured out how much we need with that. We're pretty much ready to set up and take on Tuesday when Tuesday comes in uh, about 12 hours or so. So, no, well, not even 12 hours. It comes in about eight hours. So, anyways, thanks, guys, for hanging out with me again today, and we'll see you tomorrow. What are you doing? Oh, my gosh, you got my truck all muddy. It's not like it's a mess or anything, but you got it muddy.